Okay, so today let's look at the physiology of hearing. Now, with the physiology of hearing, one thing you need to understand is that hearing depends on a series of complex steps that change sound waves in the air into electrical signals. Now, our auditory nerve uh, will then carry these particular electrical signals to the brain and then the brain interprets uh, what particular sound we have heard. So let's go straight and look at this particular physiology or mechanism of uh, hearing. So the first thing is that uh, sound waves, they enter the outer ear and travel through a narrow passageway which is called the ear canal. Now, this ear canal, of course, will lead directly to the eardrum. Now, once the eardrum receives this particular sound, the vibrations from the incoming sound waves will then send these particular vibrations to the three tiny bones in the middle of the ear. And these vibrations are going to be sent, of course, uh, to the three bones. The first one is the malleus. So the sound waves hits the malleus, then it will also hit the incas and also the steps. So the sound waves are then are sent to these three specific bones. Now, from these particular bones, what will happen next? The bones in the middle of the ear will then amplify that particular sound. Or in other words, they increase, this, they increase the sound vibrations and send these sound vibrations now to the cochlea, which is this particular structure that looks like uh, uh, a snail. Now, the cochlea, one thing you need to understand is that it is filled in with a fluid in the, in the inner ear or on the middle of it. It is filled in with a fluid. At the same time, it is also elastic. It is petitioned in the manner that uh, it has that elasticity in it. And then apart from that, of course, this petition uh, or inside the cochlea itself, it has the basilar membranes because these basilar membranes serves as the base or the ground floor on which key hearing structures sits. So you need to understand how the structure of the cochlea itself is made. Now, we have said these sound waves, they reach the cochlea. Now, once these uh, vibrations hit the cochlea, because the cochlea is filled in with the fluid, this particular fluid inside the cochlea allows the, the, the vibration to travel uh, in form of waves along the basilar membrane that is found inside the cochlea. Now, the other thing is that inside the cochlea itself, there are what are known as the hair cells. So hair cells are sensory cells that sit on top of the basilar membrane inside the cochlea itself. So these particular, um, these particular uh, sensory cells or uh, the hair cells, which are sensory cells, of course, uh, they help to transmit the same sound waves or the vibrations inside the cochlea. So when you look at the cochlea itself, it has two ends. We have this particular end which looks like a snail and this particular end that looks like a snail helps to detect high-pitched sound. For example, when an infant is crying, that particular sound will be detected by this particular portion of the cochlea. Then apart from that, we have uh, uh, the, the, this portion of the um, cochlea that is closer to these particular uh, three bones. And these ones which are closer to the center, they detect lower pitched sound, such as maybe a large dog barking, they will be detected by these portions uh, of the cochlea. So apart from that, of course, the, we, we, once the sound waves enters the inner part of the cochlea, this causes the hair cells inside the cochlea to move up and down. And if you go to the microscopic structure of these hair cells, they have fine projections inside which are known as the stereocilia. 
So these stereo cilia, they are found on top of the hair cells inside the cochlear membrane. So it is these same stereo uh, cilia uh, projections that sits on top of the hair cells that bend whenever sound waves moves along them. So this bending causes the pore-like channels which are at the tip of each stereo cilia to open up. So when this happens, the chemicals now are going to rush into the cells or the hair cells, in other words, creating an electrical signal. So you need to understand that the electrical signal is created as the sound waves are moving through the cochlea. So once these electrical waves are created, these electrical signals now they enter the auditory nerve. So they will enter the vestibular nerve or the cochlear nerve or in other words, in general, the auditory nerve. So they will enter this auditory nerve and this uh, auditory nerve will now carry these particular signals to the brain. And then the brain is going to recognize this particular sound into something that we're able to recognize and understand. So if you the sound was uh, coming from a barking dog, then you'll know to say, oh, this sound is from a dog that, that is barking. If the sound is coming from a baby that is crying, the brain helps you recognize that the baby is crying. So whatever sound it is, the brain now will interpret. So this occurs very fast, uh, such that we, uh, the brain is able to interpret whatever sound we are getting. Like the way I'm speaking, the brain is doing this uh, or detecting this information within milliseconds so that you're able to get the sound at the same time as you are seeing, um, uh, as you are getting the voices being projected from wherever you are. So that is how hearing takes place. So till next time, goodbye.